the, the question I think your critics are asking is why not afford that nuance to the families who might live in the south side of Chicago and in other major cities, and they want the same choice that you were able to afford to give to your child. All right. Well, up next, we're going to talk about a little clip from CNN that went viral, at least in our circles, where the head of the Chicago Teachers Union, Stacey Davis Gates, was called out by CNN anchor Abby Phillip for the fact that she opposes school choice for low-income Chicago residents, but sends her kid, one of her kids, to an expensive private school. Take a listen to this discussion from CNN. You've likened in the past private schools of today to, quote, segregation academies of the Jim Crow South. Why then send your child to a private school after speaking out so publicly against them? I didn't speak out against private schools. I spoke out against school choice. School choice and private schools are two different entities. The, the question I think your critics are asking is, why not afford that nuance to the families who might live in the south side of Chicago and in other major cities, and they want the same choice that you were able to afford to give to your child? Over 90 percent of my neighbors and my zip code send their children into schools outside of our zip code, outside of our neighborhood. This is not an issue of just Stacey Davis Gates and her family. Quite frankly, this is an issue, especially for middle class black families all across this country, where the public accommodation is obsolete. So when we talk about choice, Abby, what we're talking about is a decision between Frosted Flakes and Cheerios. But in Chicago, and especially in black neighborhoods, it's a decision um, with zero and zero. And that's not a choice. That is, quite frankly, an ultimatum. You are making a choice, because perhaps I assume you can afford to do that, that a lot of Chicago parents don't because they are, can't afford it. And proponents of school choice say the state should have a role in helping those families who can't afford it make the same choice that you did for your family. What we are faced with in Chicago is an absence of a choice, is an absence of resources. My son, um, he has the opportunity to play sports at a school. Sports, by the way, that are not offered at our neighborhood school. So the real scandal, Abby, is why in 2023, Black families in Chicago and across this country have to deal with such severe inequities and such high stakes. That what you just described for your son is choice that you made for your family. And I think that's what your critics are pointing out here. So, Hannah, what do you think here? Do we have a hypocrite or does she have a point when she says that just paying for your own private school is different from not supporting school choice? That was one of the most hypocritical clips I've ever seen. And her eyes just kept darting around the whole time because you could tell she knew it. She was absolutely caught, absolutely busted. She wasn't prepared to truly have to answer questions in that interview, I think because it was CNN. And this is the second week in a row, you guys, that I think we're bringing you a CNN clip that's actually based where they're actually pushing back on some of the BS coming from the left. And I don't know what's going on. I know that they've been hurting for numbers, but if they keep this up, I think this is the right strategy. CNN, let's go. Like, I... If this is actual journalism. This is not even, you know, getting partisan. It's just calling spades spades. And I like that. So that was great to see from the anchor. Um, but I thought this was just it. It's not just that it's hypocritical. It was watching her try to justify her taking her son, paying for him to go to another school so he could have better access to resources, so he could access sports so he couldn't access. And just missing the point of school choice entirely. Like, absolutely, we get that that's why you would want to take your child out and put him into another school. Other families would like to do that too, and you were denying them that option and choice. And then she mentions that over 90% of her neighbors are doing the same thing. It's like, so you're saying that your public school is failing and you're trapping the lowest income people in it. And you don't think that there's a problem with that. And you don't think that makes you a bad person when you were actively seeking to deny those resources to poor kids for what? For what reason? Who does that benefit? I'll tell you exactly who it benefits. It benefits the teachers that are failing colossally in those schools and ought to be fired. It's it's benefiting the administrators who are sucking up all the extra money. And then she's going to claim that this is a result of us not funding these schools, which we know is absolute horse poop. We absolutely are funding the schools to the tune of $15,000 a year on average per child. And oh, we actually, know it's more in Chicago. So, I'm sure it is. Yeah, get so into I the have, 
uh, yeah, uh, the 15,000, I think, is the national average. But in Chicago, uh, this is according to the Fox News article by Corey DeAngelis, they, these failure factories spend over $29,000 per student per year, about twice as much as uh, her son's private school tuition. And yet they're still failing. So the latest Illinois state assessments reveal that only 17% of Chicago public students are proficient in math and only 26% are proficient in reading. So what we have is a largely failing public school system. And this teacher's union that she is the head of actually opposed a specific program just, just recently called the Kids Tax Credit Scholarship Program for low-income students only, which they, they killed this year and she opposed it, uh, which would have helped uh, you know, s students in low-income families, uh, given them scholarships to with the money, the tax money for their education to take to use to go to private schools or other things. Um, I, I don't have all the specifics right in front of me, but basically they've actively fought against school choice while simultaneously not being willing to send all of her kids to private to the public schools. So another fun quote from her, uh, she said that she <laughs> she said um, in a statement in an interview with Chicago Magazine last year, she said, quote, I can't advocate on behalf of public education without it taking root in my own household. At the time, she sent all three of her children to Chicago public schools. Now she sends one of them to a private school. So the hypocrisy here is pretty clear. I think, you know, you could, uh, they argue that the public schools are underfunded. That's clearly not the problem. We've thrown money in, at least in Chicago, they've thrown money at the system. It is broken. And elites and high earning people have another option. They can pay to send their kids to school choice, uh, to private schools or to different schools. It's the people who are, you know, middle class or working class or low income whose tax dollars are taken forcibly and have to go to the public school. And so to send their kid to a private school, they would have to pay double, double pay for education, which is a luxury only the elites have. Whereas if they had access to school choice, then they're, the tax money allocated for their kid's education would be given to them to use wherever it's going to best serve their kid. That might be the public school. If public school are doing a great job, and I break from some people in our camps here, I think some, some, many across the country, public schools do a good job. And the parents, if given choice, would choose to continue to send their kid to their public school. And in that case, no public schools would be defunded at all. They only get defunded if they have fewer students because people choose to send their kids elsewhere. But if they're actually doing well and meeting kids' needs, they won't be defunded at all because people will still choose them. And then if they are defunded, it's only in the sense that, well, they have less money because now they're educating fewer students. So if, why would they have the same money? It doesn't make sense. So to me, the whole narrative the teachers union spin here is is bunk. And the fact that there's nothing wrong with her sending her kid to a private school, it's only wrong in the context of actively working to deny low-income families that same opportunity. That is, is pretty messed up.